Hi guys and welcome to another episode of my channel. Today, um, a video that was actually suggested or the idea was suggested to me by a subscriber and a viewer of the channel and to make a head-to-head -head between the Marine Master 300 and the Seiko Sumo. And uh, I thought, well, the best is probably to take also the SKX, in this case, the 009, into this comparison because probably many of you watching these videos have the SKX as a reference point or the Sumo and uh, so they can actually decide whether it is an idea to step up or simply to get one of these watches. So first of all, let us get the facts or pure dimensions out of the way. We have the SKX 009 with 42 millimeters in diameter, the Sumo with 45, the biggest case-wise, and the Marine Master with 44.3 millimeters. So all in all, not the smallest watches, but in the end, the Sumo is the tallest on the wrist. And uh, the reason for that is not the thickness of the watches, because we have 13.5 millimeters here, as well as there. The biggest one, the thickest one is this one, the Marine Master with 15.4 millimeters. But the interesting thing about these watches is actually the luck to luck distance. And the luck to luck distance here is almost 50.2 millimeters, whereas this is 50 and this is, I think it's 46 to 47 millimeters. So both of these watches, the SKX as well as their Marine Master were pretty thin or small, let's say small on the wrist. I have a seven inch wrist and let me put the SKX009 on it. And you see it works just perfectly fine. And then let us put this 44.3 millimeters in diameter Marine Master and it looks also pretty good. How is this possible? The reason for that is on the one hand, the relative small luck to luck distance also on the um, Marine Master, but more it's an optical illusion. I referred to, um, I think already twice on the channel, the dial diameter is very, very small. I mean, just look at it compared to the SKX. It has a larger dial diameter and by this and also by the Zeratsu polishing, it makes the Marine Master look way smaller than its dimension would suggest. And then we have the Seiko Sumo and it has the largest luck to luck distance and it also wears the largest of these watches. But still here, Seiko applies a trick by polishing the inner part of the lux whereas the outer part is brushed. So when I look at it, my um, eye is actually really pointed on this polished part because it reflects the light. And by that, it wears actually okay on my seven inch wrist. This is at least what I think. Maybe I have to get a little bit farther away from the camera. Seven inch wrist is still okay. Under the seven inch wrist, I wouldn't recommend the Sumo. Let's get back to the um, part with the um, facts, the movement. Very interesting part and this sets the watches apart. We have the 7S26 movement that is only run in, I think the SNXS series right now, but overall Seiko isn't really using it in its newer watches. They have the 4, uh, 4R36 movement, which has some um, second hand stop functionality and uh, manual wind um, functionality. This is not manual wind, it's just purely automatic and um, uh, cannot be hand wound is what I mean. Here we have the 6R35 movement, which is an evolution of the 6R15 with a longer power reserve of 70 hours. Here we got around 41. Here we got um, 70 hours. And here we have the 8L35 uh, movement, uh, with, which is basically a Grand Seiko movement that is not regulated. And this is a fact uh, that you have to take into consideration. If it's all about accuracy and uh, precision, of course, 
you can go to a watchmaker, send it to Seiko, get it regulated. But the deviation by factory, which they put in the manual, is uh, plus 15 minus 10, plus 25 minus 15, and plus 40 minus 20 seconds per day. The actual deviation, I, I measured it. You know, I'm not crazy about uh, the accuracy because in this case, I wouldn't buy automatic watches, but uh, I get plus three seconds per day, which is just fantastic. Here with the SKX, I get around six seconds per day fast with the Sumo, which is all totally fine and within specifications. But this still, even though I don't really care about that much about accuracy, if I pay that much, I want a little bit more and um, you get plus 16. So this is right now running out of specifications. I'm already thinking about going to it with a, to a service center because a watch at this price point should get a regulation. I knew it before I bought it that it's not regulated, but still, um, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed. Um, but um, yeah, the power reserve, I forgot, it's, uh, I think it's 52, 55 um, hours power reserve. So this, these are actually basic facts. Um, let's get to the loom section. So I will um, put a loom um, comparison here. And there you see that the loom on all these watches is pretty good. And I would say the um, actually the, the Marie Master has the best loom, which you can actually expect paying that much money. But then the SKX come right next to it. And the last uh, position is the, um, the Sumo. Um, the loom is this proprietary Lumi Bright, maybe a little bit better on the Marine Master, but the fact that separates these watches is the sheer amount of loom that is put in it. And here we have the least amount. I think this is what I, what I guess. When it comes to versatility of the pieces, I think um, you can't really go wrong with either of them. Of course, you get the Sumo also in different um, varieties. We have a Pepsi. You have these American special models with textured dials. You have the black one. You can get the former or the, the, the predecessor, um, uh, the blue one and uh, blue coral and everything. And the SKX, you can get the 007, the 13, the thir uh, 009. I've got this uh, 009 because I wanted the Pepsi look. And um, yeah, they are all very versatile. You can also get this with the, with the uh, black dial and with a green one. And um, it looks it looks great, and they look great on NATO straps and leather straps. So I think they are actually pretty versatile. Maybe the SKX is the most versatile of all of them. The Sumo isn't the best on 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 leather and other like fixed straps because um, the uh, spring bars are pretty far away from the case. Something I don't really like. Like also with Tudor watches. When it comes to my personal experiences with those watches i think it's something iconic the skx it, it's it, it's a joy to wear especially i only can recommend it i can highly recommend it on this standard seiko um a jubilee style bracelet it's so comfortable it looks the business it looks actually way more expensive than it is and um it's so comfortable the bracelet on the sumo is a little bit boring i'm i'm not there's nothing wrong with this uh, pressed metal um, uh, clasp. It's it's secure, but it's pretty thin. But I experience, I, I, I expect a little bit more when you pay that money, at least uh, some machined clasp. And uh, it's a little bit boring, uh, I must say. And the bracelet on the, um, the Marine Master is just, it's very, very nice. I really like this long elements. Some people dislike it especially if you have a small wrist, it doesn't really hug your wrist. But if you have a seven inch wrist like mine, it's just, okay, let me put it on the wrist and see what I mean. It's just okay how it articulates. But if you have a smaller wrist, it looks a little bit strange. And you have this um, adjustment option, which isn't the prettiest out there, but it does the job and um, it's pretty useful day to day. Um, what else? Um, the conclusion, maybe. Already talked about it in my um, state of the collection video. I think I get rid of the Sumo. Even though the green is beautiful, I don't really see myself wearing it anymore. 
if I want something, let's say more dressy, I, I, I go with the Speedmaster or the, the Rolex. And um, yeah, I don't know, I, I think I, I will part with it. And maybe something f fresh, also maybe from Seiko, maybe the Antarctica monster or something like that. Uh, I hope this time this will stay in the collection because it's a classic and it's a go-to watch, a holiday watch. It's um, You can't go wrong with it and I probably, hopefully I won't sell it because uh, and deep in my heart I know I like the SKX and the Marine, Marine Master. Well, I don't know yet. I really, really, really enjoy the polishing and um, yeah, it's something special. Um, Maybe the, the, the bezel action almost forgot because it comes it's part of the diver experience. You have this rather mushy, but to my eye and to, to my ear, pleasant bezel action. You have a way better bezel action on the Sumo. And then you have the best, I think, among the Seiko divers on this on the on the Marine Master, but it is not as precise as on let's say a Tudor. This is what I experienced. Um yeah when it comes to the conclusion, I would say money is a big part of it. And uh, when you consider everything and take everything into consideration, also the price point, then you have to go if you can get it for a decent price with the SKX, even though it's discontinued, if you can get it for a decent price, this is the Seiko to get. Um if you want to step up the game, I wouldn't buy Seiko. I wouldn't buy Seiko in the price range between, let's say, street price above 600. Um, I wouldn't buy a Seiko between 600 and 2000 euros because you don't really get something. I don't know. It's 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 it, it gets it gets boring after time because you know you you get this one you get it for street price around 600 660 euros. It's it's okay for what you get. But if you look at the marine baby marine master or stuff, you have to pay thousand euros or something, and you don't really get that much more. And um, if you pay over two thousand euros, you get it for a street price for around two thousand three hundred euros. You get the marine master. I think for the price point, it's okay. It shouldn't be more expensive at all. Even though the the case work is beautiful and everything, the regulation is a point which is something I think for this price point you, you, you can expect, especially if you look at the competitors um, uh, street price wise. Um, in the end, I would always go with the SKX, even though I don't, I know they aren't totally comparable, but um, it's up to you how much money you want to spend on a Seiko. Um, I love these watches. I love Seiko watches. And this is probably why I, I totally got the buck. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to my video. See you in the next one.